monsoon season ended today. So of course we get this little, last little bit of monsoon. This is Bob Collect Stamps. I'm Bob. Welcome back. I have a little different something to, a little something different, one of those two things, maybe both. Never know. Okay, this is the top 10 things you don't need when collecting stamps. First thing you don't need is a watermark tray. This is a watermark tray. It's a black piece of plastic tray. You can use just a black piece of plastic. But what you do with it is you put a stamp in it face down, and then you add watermark fluid. Some people use lighter fluid, which is a little cheaper, a lot cheaper, and you can use that too. I don't use it because I'm in the desert. It can be 117, and I don't have the ventilation. I don't open the windows, so I don't have the ventilation to use lighter fluid, but I can use this. Still should be done in a ventilated area, but at least it shouldn't kill me like lighter fluid could. So anyway, you put a drop or two, that's all you need, onto the stamp. It evaporates fairly quickly, but it'll be long enough for you to look to see if there's a watermark on the back, on the stamp, in the paper of the stamp. A watermark is simply a mark that is made while they lay down the paper. It's a little thinning, it's there's a design, it's a little thinning of the paper, just a little bit, but you can see it with the watermark. It makes it more translucent than the surrounding paper and it shows up dark. Sometimes you need that to differentiate between different stamps. They could be the same perforation, they could be the same design, and they could be uh, offered in several different years, each with a different watermark on their paper. If you've ever had fancy paper from an office supply store or state or station, an old fashioned stationery store, you might have seen watermarks without watermark fluid. Some of that fancy paper is slightly embossed and that is basically a watermark. You hold it up to the light and you can see the fancy design on there. Sometimes it's just letters, sometimes it's lines, sometimes it's stars, sometimes it's words. Um, could be just about anything as a watermark. They will tell you in a catalog what kind of watermark is or when you're, what kind of watermark it is and what it's supposed to be. That's the only way you can tell some stamps apart or if you've got a genuine stamp versus a fake stamp. So that's one thing you don't need, but it helps. The other thing you don't need when you're collecting stamps, not at all, is scissors. Now, scissors, these are one of my pair. We've got dozens of scissors around here because we always need one where we don't have one. This is my stamp pair. It goes on my collecting table. This is my office pair goes on the desk, another office pair. This, this is useful when cutting st stamps, or round stamps to cut them off the cover so you can remove the paper from it by soaking. You don't need to do that. You can just tear it. This is a little neater. Sometimes, especially with self-adhesives now, you can put a round, you, you want to cut around, you don't necessarily take it off the paper because you need a special fluid for that or really good luck. But scissors is definitely something you want to consider if you're into that stuff. But if you want to leave all your covers whole, if you're happy with tearing, you don't necessarily need these. Besides they're around the house anyway. Another thing you don't need, writing implements. You never need to take notes. You never need to identify, you never write on a little piece of paper what this stamp is. You don't ever have to do that, but you probably want to. 
So you probably need something to write with. You can use a regular ballpoint pen or whatever writing implement you have. It's not the best thing, however. What you probably want, if you want a writing implement, is either a pencil. This one is not sharp, but it's a pencil. And or a pigment writer. Pigment writers are permanent ink, and they have uh, ink that will not run. This is a specialty you can get at a craft or art store. Sometimes off supply stores will carry them. Uh, I've been having trouble finding these lately, but I use a lot of pencil. Now, one thing about pencil, one thing about pigment, these are for writing on, or a regular pen, these are for writing on a separate piece of paper or in your album or in your stock book or something like that, not on that stamp. If you write on it, especially with a pencil, you will break fibers in the paper and the stamp will not last as long. Never though, never. If someone has written on it, don't erase. No matter what kind of eraser you use, if you try and erase somebody's pencil mark on the back of a stamp, you will damage the fibers of the paper. And again, the stamp paper will not last as long. So please, go right on the back of the stamp. I know some dealers do, and you're gonna, and if you're a dealer, don't write me hate mail. Another thing you don't need is a perforation gauge. This is mine. I've used it for years, decades. This is a perforation gauge. And what it does is you can hold the stamp up next to these little pictures here and match it up and it will tell you what the perforation is. You see that in catalogs, you see it in stamp listings. Sometimes uh, perforation could be 14, 16, whatever. It helps you identify the stamp, but you don't need to have it. But sometimes that makes a difference. That little perforation, just the perforation can make a lot of difference in the value of the stamp, make a lot of difference in what kind of stamp it is. So if you want to know exactly what the stamp is, you need this. But otherwise, most collectors don't need this unless they can get this specialty, especially US stamps. Another thing you don't need, long-term storage. These are the things I use. Glassine envelope, dealer's card. I use these mostly, I don't buy them, they come with stamps and so I save them, a lot of them, and, and they stick around. You can write on them, you can write on the glassine envelope. You can use either one, doesn't matter. The, the dealer's card used by dealers, you can see better. They come in white background or black background. The black background shows up the perforations a little better if you're looking for a perfect stamp. And that's why they're often used and the white ones are much less common, but you can do that. You can put more in a similar size glassine envelope. So if you're storing bulk, store more in one of these and they are a little bit cheaper. So if you're not storing stamps in long-term, if you don't care about your stamps, if you don't care if they last till next week, you can put them in just about anything. Don't put them in envelopes though. Envelopes, I mean paper envelopes, like leather envelopes. Don't don't use those. They they are often not quality paper, and you can get the stamps wet. These these help prevent from getting damp stamps unless you spill something on them. Envelopes can also the glue in them is often not archival. And that's bad. If the glue gets heated or wet, or something like that, then what can happen is it can leach onto the stamp, stick to the stamp, and or the stamp, if it's mint or has a little bit of glue left on it, it can be stuck to the envelope. And that would be bad because then you have to soak it off there. If it's a mint stamp, you've ruined it as a mint stamp. It becomes unused with no gum if you have to soak it. But so you don't need long term storage. If you're not going to keep the stamps for a long time, you know, like you're going to sell them on or give them on, 
you don't necessarily need something like that, but most stamp collectors want something like that. So go for it if you do, go for it if you don't. It's your collection. Another thing you may not want is display storage. Now, this is display storage as I use it. You can use an album. Stamped albums are great for display storage. You can use a stock book. A stock book like this has pages in it, of course. They come in various sizes. 64 seems to be a lar uh, the large size that I've seen lately. You can put stamps in there and you can see it. It's display storage, kind of like these dealer cards. The glassing envelopes you can't really see in them. You could use dealer cards if you want for display storage. You just put them in a box instead of, you know, a file box, something like that. These you can put on your shelf more easily um, and that you can look at your stamps when you want to look at your stamps. And you can put extras in here instead of using, uh, if you have a small amount of stamps, I have a large amount of stamps and I keep them in something else. I keep them for long-term in stock pages like this. Each stock page, the ones I get usually have, have seven, uh, sometimes two, sometimes four, it depends on what size. They come in a lot, everything from one to eight, I think, uh, slats. And you put the slant stamps in the slat and they are on display for you. You can double them up. You know, you, know, you can overlap the stamps if you want for, for one, one, one issue, uh, or you can... I uh, lay them out like this, showing all of them. Depends on how many stamps you have, depends on your wishes. Keep them any way you want. You don't really need this though, because if you're not going to display your stamps so that you don't even need to see them, why bother? But if you want to see your stamps, if you want to look at them easily, you need something like this, some sort of display, whether stock books or an album. Something else you do not need is a means to identify your stamps. This is a Scott catalog. It's the favored one in the United States. There are other catalogs. This is one volume of it. This is volume 3B, H and I, countries that begin alphabetically by H and I. You don't have to have anything like this. If you just like the pretty pictures, you don't need to know what stamp it is. You don't need this. You can look online. Uh, so, you, you know, you might, might want to, you know, you don't have to have a book. You can get an electronic version. You can look online. A site called connect.com uh, is really good. And they have a stamp identifier app. It's pretty good. Uh, I don't have too much problem finding most stamps on there. Sometimes it's the wrong stamp because I haven't looked at the perforation or I haven't looked at the watermark. So I'm not sure which of 20 stamps of that design are. This one that's got insert, started in 19, no, started in 2016, publishing color pictures of all the stamps and well, almost all the stamps, but they, <laughs> at least one from each series. Uh, so they, they have information such as the perforation and the number, the Scott number of the stamp and the current catalog value. As I said in the previous video, catalog value has nothing to do with reality often. But you don't need this. If you don't care what your stamps are, value that. If you don't need to identify them, really, you just need to know that it's a pretty stamp from Poland with a Mona Lisa on it or something like that. That's all you need to know. You don't need a catalog. Another thing you don't need, tongs or tweezers. These are my new tongs or tweezers. They are spade tipped and they are angled. 
see that against my shirt. They have this nice angle so that I can go like that along the table or album page or whatever and and lift up the stamp that way. I don't have to get down and with my fingers resting on the pages anymore. It's really useful. However, you can get straight ones. There are a whole bunch of different kinds. If you get them and you don't need them, what you want is philatelic tongs or tweezers, stamp tongs or tweezers. You don't want hobby ones. Even if they look like this, the edges are not polished and they'll rip your stamps. So you don't want to get one of those, but you don't need this. You can use your fingers. The oils in your hands, and if you have not washed your hands before handling the stamps, the oils in your last meal will damage the paper. It'll make the paper more interesting, shall we say, to uh, little critters that would eat it. It will damage the paper itself, uh, soaking it with oil, and that could cause it to dissolve faster cause all sorts of problems. But if you don't care, you don't need to use tongs. I use tongs most of the time when I'm handling stamps. Not all the time. I'm bad that way. But if in a, in a perfect world, I'd use tongs all the time. But if you don't want to use tongs, you don't need them. Another thing you don't need to collect stamps is a magnifying glass or other magnifying lens. I use this one. If you want to see the details, you might want something like that. Unless your eyes are really good, mine are not. You don't absolutely need it. You really don't. I have gotten along for 50 years without one, except usually until recently, when I've been learning more and more about differences among, small differences among stamps, and then I saved my eyes. So you don't need it. This one is kind of cool. It's handheld, has a light on it, lights up the stamp really well. You can also get magnifiers with, on a stand, so you don't have to hold it. You can use both hands to manipulate the stamps when you're using your tongs or tweezers or fingers or whatever you're using. And those can come lighted batteries or plug-in or USB or whatever you're doing. Um, I recommend something like this. Saves your eyes in the long run, helps you find the details. But if you're just looking at the pretty pictures, you don't need one of these. Like all the other stuff in this list, you don't need it to be a stamp collector or a philatelist. The last thing, number one thing you do not need if you are collecting stamps, this is going to shock a lot of you. So just hold on to your horses, cover your mouth. You might even come and cover your ears, but <laughs> why not? I hope you listen. But the last thing you don't need stamps. You do not need stamps to collect stamps or be a philatelist. A philatelist is someone who studies stamps. Stamp collectors usually cut collect stamps. So you could collect pictures of stamps. You can collect computer files of pictures of stamps. You don't have to collect the actual physical stamp in order to be a philatelist. You don't need this. This one's from Trinidad and Tobago. It features a couple of parrots. I can't read the, the ones parrotlets. Um, you don't need to have this particular stamp or any particular stamp in order to learn about it. So you can be a stamp collector. You can be a philatelist without having any stamps. You know, I like my stamps. I'm a thing person. I like things. If you don't have the room, if you don't have the money, if you don't have whatever, you can collect the pictures, you still can participate in philately without stamps, physical stamps. And there goes be some people who are screaming at the screen right now, but you can't be a stamp collector, let alone a philatelist without having a stamp. 
or lots of stamps. Too bad to them. It's your collection. It's your hobby. It's not theirs. Well, it's theirs too, but your collection is not theirs. Your hobby is not requiring their rules. Their rules don't matter. You can collect anything you want. And if it's pictures of stamps and do research on pictures of stamps, learn about stamps, put them in a PDF and share them on the internet. Don't share them on the internet. Put, put them in a book for yourself. Put them in, you know, you can make a stamp album full of pictures of stamps. Pictures. What an idea. So that's my 10 things that you do not have to own if you are a stamp collector or a philatelist. You don't have to own any of those. I recommend most of them. I have them and they find I find them useful as I explained, but you follow your rules, your idea of what it is to do this hobby, what you make the hobby yourself. Remember, don't follow anybody else's rules except have fun, take care of yourself and your stamps. You come first. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this. I really did. Happy stamping. <laughs>